Welcome back to Cohort W. I'm your Season 3 host, CW3 Susie Albert. And this is the final episode in the series where we hear from W1s who are completing their first year as warrant officers. In today's episode, Episode 8, W1 Hakim Ware discusses how he overcomes personal and professional obstacles through use of his spirituality and the cohort. He is a Component 1 regular Army W1 who is currently attending flight school, and though he talks about W01 transition, his insights are incredibly valuable for any grade warrant to caretake their resilience and solidarity in our cohort and our community. Let's hear from W1 Ware. My name is Warrant Officer 1, Hakeem Ware. What walk class did you graduate in? I graduated the very first class that graduated at Fort Novacells, 2311. We were the Redwoods. Oh, Redwoods. That's right. So shout out to the Redwoods. I obviously, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm biased, but I loved that class. And uh, so shout out to the Redwoods. Wherever they're at, I am certain they are all successful. Yeah, we're all still very tight. Um, we're spread out around the world right now, but uh, the group chat that we had for walks is uh, still alive and well, and we keep in touch. So it's pretty special. I absolutely love hearing that. And that's like, I don't know what we want for you. That's what I want for you um, is to have created just like, I don't know, your, your cohort, like that is your cohort. And so I love, I absolutely love hearing that. Um, so Mr. Ware, you are Compo one and you are branched aviation. Both facts. So you graduated in April of 2023. Can you sort of outline for our listeners and for me, um, what helped you successfully transition, not just through that process as a W-1, but once you put on that W-1 rank to where you are at 13 months later, what helped you successfully transition through that? Mm, Well, I'd say, I would say it's the people. Um, I have the experience of doing some enlisted time first. I'm not a street seater, so uh, I was an E5 before I got selected for walks. And, you know, my early experience in the military was uh, m- mostly about me, I guess, because um, wasn't put in charge of anybody or anything early on. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but as I progressed in my responsibility and um, my accolades, I learned that uh, I get further with um, a team around me that I, I support, mm-hmm. I contribute to. And uh, once I got to walks, um, that was furthered. I wouldn't have made it through without uh, certain certain leaders and certain peers who, you know, helped me out in low times. And uh, there were low times <laughs> after walks. Yeah. Um, after walks, it was no different. Uh, I got to BCO. And even though they make it clear that the number one agenda is to get you through flight school. They mm-hmm. have plenty of good leadership and mentorship. Uh, it's pretty abundant there. If you awesome. make the time, yeah, if you make the time and you show them, you know, you're about the right stuff, you just need a little help with something going on in your personal life or um, maybe you're having a personality conflict with somebody directly, you know, yeah. in your chain, there's, there's always somebody else there who knows how to, have those conversations and how to, you know, ameliorate things without, you know, causing too many waves and just keep you focused on flight school. So, you know, I've, I've had, um, children here at, uh, Mm -hmm. Fort Novacil and, you know, I've been, uh, down with an injury for a few months and, you know, so my, my path through BCO and flight school hasn't been straight. So I definitely, um, I think I have, you know, the experience to speak on, um, how they handle the lefts and rights of life while getting you through this trade-off course of flight school. I really appreciate that because I know that you have, uh, what is a longer technical affiliation, right? Your WOBIC is significantly longer 
than what we generally see for technicians, right, for, for warrant tech. Um, and I think that's something I didn't intend to ask you about, but I do want to ask you about um, if you would feel comfortable kind of discussing what has helped you traverse obstacles that you have faced in your warrant officer journey. Um, well, professional challenges and personal challenges, like everybody. So my professional side and my personal side are both led by my faith. Um, yeah. I'm Christian, and I, I serve a mighty God. And um, that that has helped me personally a lot. Um, but as far as uh, other things, um, you know, I, I, I try to keep my family priority one, um, at least when I come home. I can get a restful night's sleep when everyone's happy here. <laughs> and uh, I've just always been a person who seeks out assistance um, and and stay attached to, I guess, the right talent around me. Uh, I'm definitely a product of standing on a lots of giants' shoulders. Yeah. So um, personally and professionally, that's helped me. And I wish it was a little bit more fancy for me. Yeah. That's that's been that's been enough. I. I'm glad it's not fancy because I think that um, sometimes when we talk about like, hey, what, what is helping you through an obstacle, right? The, the fancier it gets or the more complex it gets, sometimes that means like the more time consuming it is to em- implement and maybe the, the harder it might feel. And I think that's something that's really important that you're touching on is that the Army like does value and should value spiritual wellness. And we see that. Right in FM seven twenty two, which covers holistic yep. health and fitness. Yep. That it is doctrine. Spiritual yep. fitness right. <laughs> is a very important element of this like holistic, you know, like soldier experience and human experience. And I also love that you're kind of relating that to what we you know, the twenty fifteen human dimension strategy, which says that like people are our number one asset. And so you are finding this like sort of beautiful balance between what we find in doctrine for wellness and how you can apply it to like to remain resilient, right? And and to stay engaged as an officer, as a W one, as a student, right, as a father, as a partner. Um and I think that that's really cool. So I appreciate that um you brought that up. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the army is a human enterprise. Um yeah. although we have a, a very unique purpose in the world, uh, we're run by people and we serve the people of this country. Um, and so the human factor has to be paramount because that's our foundation block. This makes me recall a conversation that you and I had about a year ago, right? 13 months ago. And we were sort of talking about, um, what is power, right? And, and that like sometimes in the army, and we were talking about this earlier today, right? Like, uh, like, uh, sometimes we feel dismayed when people perceive power, right, in the military as, like, rank or authority alone. Oh, right? yeah. I remember, I remember this conversation, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And something that we had sort of unfolded together is that, like, power is not necessarily control, although it can entail control, but it is meant to be a responsibility to others. And as oh, yeah. foreign officers... And I loved, and this was a really meaningful conversation um, for me. We had it in my office over at First Walk. But that, um, I think having the humility and that, that concept of selfless service in your execution of power as a warrant officer means you have a responsibility to others. You have a responsibility to educate your soldiers. You have a responsibility to learn your craft so well that you can responsibly advise your commander and you can make them feel prepared and empowered and supported and you know, have a better ability to visualize the battlefield and the problem set and all of these things. And those are very selfless endeavors or they are meant to be in, in the conversation, right? That's sort of what we were talking about is like, what is our vision of perfection and leadership? And those were a couple of the things um, that we talked about. Can you remember any of the other things that we talked about? Uh, yeah. Well, first I'll say, uh, you know, too true. Couldn't agree with you more. Um, serving is the power Um, you know, we have a purpose and the purpose is, is other people with our team completing a goal for others. So, um, you know, the power that we get is to that end. It's, you know, as soon as it starts 
becoming about something else, um, that's when you start getting the malevolent fruit of, you know, human folly and, yeah. um, and bad things start to happen in commands and culture and stuff like that. So, um, all I could say is that I agree and I've never, I just been blessed to be able to see, um, what good leadership and support of those underneath you can do for people. Um, I've also, you know, been uh, exposed to bad leadership, like a lot of people sure. have, a lot of people listening to this, and you even have. And yeah. my response to that was to eliminate it by being what is right, by, you know, yeah. by not not copy and pasting that leadership style and not making people feel that way. So, yeah, I just agree with you, and that's how I would expand on it. Yeah, I um I appreciate that you brought that up because I think that that is a a really authentic element of your experience and your experience in the time that I have known you and I did see you face obstacles. Like firsthand I saw you face obstacles and I am and and this is not something that we really have the ability to teach in 5 weeks, so I know that you came with this skill <laughs> and it's inherent in who you are, but you um number one, are like a very gentle leader. Like you're a very gentle, like emotionally intelligent and informed, empathetic leader. Um, and your accountability, like the accountability that you take of the things that you can control, like it's sort of like, I think sometimes when you face an obstacle, it's very easy to become the things that you hate. And something yep. that I have experienced with you is that nothing can convince you to become the thing that you hate. And I really do think that that's like your superpower as a leader. And I'm so grateful to have that in our shared cohort. Thank you. Yeah. I really, I really appreciate those words. I, you know, I just got to give the honor for that to God. And I guess my parents too, because, you know, we grew up kind of rough and their response to the rough times uh, was what I learned from. Um, and I, I have three sons and I'm very proud of my three sons and yeah. they're going to learn that from me too. So, <laughs> you know, it's just, there, there's just, uh, there's a choice we all have to make, you know, whether it's just in our personal life or professional life combined to be the change we want to see as much as we can. You know, I'm not yeah. perfect. No one's perfect. Sometimes we fail and we make decisions as leaders that we wish we didn't. And mm -hmm. once we once we sober up, sober up from that, you know, you got to try to make it right. And just, you just, you just got to try. That's the thing is a lot of people on at the onset of doing the right thing, they just, they decide not to even try. <laughs> and yeah. I think that's the saddest thing. Cause if you fail, trying to fail forward, um, yeah. no yeah. one, no one who's, no one who's accomplished anything would um, hold you to the fire for that. How much longer do you have to go um, until your technical affiliation is complete? So I'm about um, about halfway through Common Core right now. Nice. Um, I am in Gold Class, Gold Flight, and very happy to be uh, carrying on that heritage. We um, recently got colored hats back in <laughs> Common Core, and initially, you know, you don't you don't really appreciate it because it's brand new. But you know, after some time, and the class congeals and and stuff like that, you you know, you develop a personality and you know, you realize that your your class and almost like walks, you know, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna put uh, a new vibration into um, yeah. existence that wasn't there before. So yeah, yeah. So halfway through Comic Core, and I got another two months to go, and then I select my airframe, and nice. it's a nice nice fight right now. So I've got to compete yeah. for the OML. Yeah. I, I just think it's so interesting that you and I, like, regardless of the question that I ask you, we continue to go back to, like, people first. Like, you continue to talk about, like, team and how special and important team is. And you're reminding me of something that CW5 Dowling um, says over, and I'm in the Department of Strategy and Doctrine, and he's the uh, department head. And something that he brings up about warrant officership that I had actually never heard until I worked for him is that mm -hmm. um, when you're enlisted, um, you have like tasks, you're like really focused on the execution, right? And you have a ton of individual tasks. And yep. 
when you become a warrant officer, one of the big shifts that occurs is that everything is a collective task. And something that I talked about in an episode, the episode where I talked to Miss Serino, is that like sort of the, the irony of warrant officership, and this does not necessarily apply to aviators, but for us tech, we are isolated. Right? Like we are generally like very alone. You'll be like the only warrant in the unit, or the, certainly the only one with your technical affiliation, or your branch affiliation, or your MOS, or whatever. And but everything we do is a collective event. And I think you just kind of keep reviving this theme in my memory that because you do so much of the planning process, right? You engage so much in staff processes, in um, operations processes, and the Army really is a team sport and warrant officers are a critical element of that. Yep. Couldn't, couldn't agree more. I just, uh, I know that it's a little different, you know, between uh, tech warrants in a shop and aviation warrants and obviously i'm not operational yet i'm still in trade-off but um you know couldn't agree with you more yeah um if you could give one piece of advice to somebody who is about to embark on their first year and an aviation uh, a brand new aviation w1 just graduated walk uh what what advice would you give them to help guide them through this first year well, um, besides the stuff that all of us are super uh, excited, anxious about, like SEER and stuff, and you look up that you know normal information online, um, the thing that I would say assisted me the most um, and that I would advise to others is um, uh, just your network, understanding that, you know, you're, we're in a very small population of, of uh, in our branch, and the things that you say, do, the way you make people feel, um, it's not forgotten. Um, yeah. it's, it's so, um, with that in mind, you know, especially like me, I live on post, my neighbors are my coworkers and, you know, in four years I'll might see some of them again, you know, and all that. Mm-hmm. So, um, networking is very important. Understanding that, you know, the team first mentality is what's going to, uh, get you, the results that you'd like to see in your career um, because people are willing to help you um, here. So yeah. getting far and, and, and accomplishing your goals, doing it solo, um, it's like compounding pressure yeah. and none of us do good in that situation. So, so yeah, networking and understanding how small the community is and how that's an asset for us. You're not forgotten. So if you spend a little time investing yourself, um, I guess I would say maybe endearing yourself a little bit to be of of value, of value to others in the branch. Um, it's going to be, it's going to, your, your return on, on that investment is going to be, um, felt more immediately than when you're, um, somewhere where you just feel like another number or another soldier in the, in the, in, you know, in the mass. Mm -hmm. Did you believe prior to your transition that the cohort was a real thing? Mm, no, because um <laughs> when you when when you um when you've had some experience in the military, um I this is what I base my answer off of, you know, you realize like there's some effort to on the surface seem like, oh yeah, we're all for one and one for all type of thing, but mm-hmm. you know, there's personality conflict, there's sure. petty issues. And there's, there's, you know, higher level issues too, but, um, I, I would definitely say like, so I, I also am, am a prior Marine, the, right, you know, yeah. the, the, the spirit of core that I felt in the Marine Corps amongst, you know, the brotherhood of the Marine Corps, it, it, I would say it's pretty similar to, to the cohort because we feel special for being here because mm-hmm. we know how rare, how rare and how difficult it is to get here and to succeed here and continue to be able to stay here. Cause once you're an officer, yeah. you know, there's no guarantee that you're just, you're going to be here. You can get fired, you know? So, yeah. um, <laughs> so, so it's, it's special. And the, the rareness of the achievement um, here unites the community in a way that uh, is palpable immediately. So, you know, once you get out of walks and you, you know, you go to your first command and you, you meet other warrant officers, there's, you know, there's definitely that um, camaraderie and the spirit of core. It's real. So 
I didn't believe in it. I just thought it was another, you know, buzzword when I was going yeah. through walks and stuff. And I was like, okay, neat. We're some, some weird word, you know, cohort, <laughs> you know, we're calling ourselves some other type of weird thing, but yeah, you know, I, um, I appreciate it now. Thank you so much um, for coming on, for your candor, for sharing your ideas. Yeah, anything for you, ma'am. And, you know, I definitely believe that God puts special people in our life at the right time, and you're no exception to that. So I, I would I'd be there for you in a heartbeat. So I'm happy. If, I hope I added value to what you're trying to do here. And um, yeah. <laughs> thanks. And, uh, yeah, I was happy to do it. If you have any questions or feedback on what you want to hear more of this season, please email warrant.officer.history at gmail.com. As always, for updates and information, please visit the Warrant Officer Historical Foundation at warrantofficerhistory.org. This is an incredible way to remain connected to the cohort as well as involvement in the Warrant Officer Association, VFW, or Strength and Knowledge Journal. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time.